Hey guys, and welcome to my budget building basics. I'm Linda May Myers, a financial coach. I'm a Ramsey preferred coach, and I'm here to help you with the dreaded B word budgeting. Unfortunately, the word budget has gotten a bad reputation. In reality, a budget is just a plan and it's your plan. Sadly, many people view a budget as restrictive, something that controls them and keeps them from doing what they really want to do. And if this is you, let me tell you, it couldn't be further from the truth. When done properly, a budget doesn't limit your freedom. It gives you freedom. It's really all about being intentional with where your money goes and therefore where you want to go in your life. So this workshop is for you. If you don't know how to budget, you don't want to budget, you don't have a budget, or you think you can't budget. It's also for you if your budget just doesn't work or if you struggle to follow your budget. And I think that includes the majority of people. Am I right? All right. So what we're going to cover today is what is a budget, why you need a budget, how to create your budget, how to stick to your budget, and how to adjust your budget when needed. And no, I'm not getting paid for every time I say the word budget. (laughs) All right, so let's get this started. What is a budget? A budget is a plan for how you're going to spend your money. It's planning, dare I say, telling every dollar where it should go before the month begins. A budget is your action plan. It gives you a clear picture of where you want your money to end up each month. Have you ever had more months left over and less money? With a budget, as Dave Ramsey says, you are spending your money on paper, on purpose, before the month begins. So why exactly do you need a budget? Well, it puts you in charge and in control of every dollar that you earn and spend, right? You'll find money you didn't even know you had or wouldn't have had, and you'll build wealth doing it. Budgeting will help you achieve the goals you're working towards, whether it's getting out of debt, saving for retirement, saving for a home purchase, or just trying to keep your grocery bill from getting out of hand. When you see planning a budget as simply spending your money intentionally, you can actually find more freedom to spend it. Once something has been budgeted for, you'll be able to spend that money without feeling guilty or shame. Many people even say they find extra money after they've created a realistic budget and can stick with it. How to create your budget? Well, it's four simple steps. This is the fun stuff, the numbers, dun, dun, dun. All right. Step one, write down your total income. This is your total take-home pay after tax for both you and if you're married, your spouse. Don't forget to include everything, full-time jobs, second jobs, freelance pay, social security, Um, let's see, child support and any other ongoing source of income. All right. Step two, list all, like that's all capitals, all of your expenses. Think about your regular bills, your mortgage or rent, your electricity, um, and your, don't forget your irregular bills, quarterly payments like insurance or, or HOA that are going to be due in the upcoming month or so. After that, add up all your other costs, like groceries, gas, subscriptions, entertainment, and clothing. Every dollar you should spend, every dollar you spend should be accounted for. So, and I say that because I had a client once to come to me. Um, she was so proud. She got her budget to balance out to zero. And we'll talk about zero-based budgets later, but she got it all balanced out. And I'm looking at her budget and she was so proud. It was beautiful. Um, she met all of her goals for the month. And then I realized one glaring thing. She didn't account for food. So I said, either this is a new weight loss plan or we need to rework this one. So make sure you go through everything. And what I recommend you doing to make sure that doesn't happen is to pull out your statements, whether it's your checking account statement, your credit card statements, however you're spending money, pull those statements out and go back 30 to 90 days and create categories for everything you're spending so you don't miss a beat on that. All right. And this is an exercise I always do with my clients who need the help. All right. Also set up funds for future expenses like clothing or Christmas or a tax bill, right? We know our kids grow and we need to buy them back to school clothing. If that's the thing you do, we know Christmas is coming. We know when birthdays are coming. We know when taxes do. So don't let them be surprises because this is not a time to dip into emergency funds. This is something that should be budgeted for. And then step three, we're going to subtract our expenses from income and make sure it equals zero. So we call this a zero-based budget, meaning your income minus expenses should equal zero. When you do that, you know every dollar you make has a place in your budget. Um, It doesn't have to be spent. It can be savings. It can be giving. 
Um, it can be in a fund for later, for later spending, like we mentioned with the, you know, Christmas or clothing or tax or whatever. But if you're over or under, check your math and simply return and start over. And don't tell me when you do this, don't come and tell me that you won because you had money left over. That just means that you didn't follow instructions. Give it a name. It can be debt payoff, savings, whatever, but give every dollar a name. And then last but not least, step four is track it. Once you create your budget, track your spending. It's the only way you'll know if your spending lines and the plan. And I tell my clients to give themselves um, about three months to get it down and start off tracking it daily. So how to stick to your budget, communicate, communicate with your spouse. If you're married an accountability partner, if you're not, or find a great financial coach. Yeah, that was a shameless plug. I know. Second, know your goals, get out of, whether it's getting out of debt, saving for a home, or maybe it's retirement early, or maybe it's traveling more or starting your own business, whatever your goals are, know them and write them down. I have a whole thing that I go through when it comes to goals because they're so, so, so important. Second only to mindsets. All right, track your spending daily to start. This is a habit that must be formed and exercised. Don't wait for the end of the month to sit down and track where your money went to find out that you blew your budget. Track it daily and then weekly to stay on track. Create a miscellaneous fund. And this is kind of like... Well, it's like an emergency fund on a monthly basis, kind of. And what it does is it it helps you catch all the little incidentals that may not have been thought of, you know, something that popped up or something that you wanted to donate to or something that um, was unplanned, um, but on a small scale, all right? Or sometimes it's a spillage over, you went over a little bit in your grocery budget and we can catch it in the miscellaneous funds. Identify your budget busters. Speaking of groceries. Identifying your budget busters, know your weaknesses and your family's weaknesses, guard your budget and yourself. You know, the biggest um, budget busters out there are basically food, whether it's groceries or eating out, it's it's always food and entertainment. Um, Sometimes there'll be a hobby or something else out there, but those generally are the two biggest budget budgets, at least that I've seen. Um, So if you need to get those under control, I recommend um, using cash envelopes, Um, system to help, you know, keep those budget buster categories under control. All right. So we're going to put away and cut up credit cards, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, If you have multiple credit cards, I have a client that has like 14 credit cards. I will challenge them to pick out their favorite and get rid of the rest. Um, But we want to stop digging that debt hole. If you can't control your spending, you need to get those cards out of your wallet using the every dollar app. So I love this app. It has been so helpful for my husband and I. It helps us not only track daily because we're tracking daily, right? But also to communicate. See how I did that too? And it's a twofer. It's a twofer because when we have both have the Every Dollar app on our phones, um, he knows where we are and I know where we are. He knows what I spent. I know what he spends. And it's all down together. All right. And then last but not least, how to stick to your budget is automate when possible. Set up all your bills on auto pay that you can. This helps make the process smoother and avoid late fees. And if you tell me that you don't do that because you're afraid you're not going to have the money, I'm going to tell you that because we're budgeting, we're going to have the money there. All right. How to adjust your budget. So give yourself grace. As with anything, there is a learning curve. So you need to go into this knowing that your first budget will not be perfect. I promise. So it usually takes three to four months to get a handle on budgeting and that's okay. That's why I generally work with most of my clients at minimum of three to four months um, because budgeting is the foundation of mostly what um, we need to accomplish outside of mindset and behavior changes. Um, remember every month it's going to be different. You need to do the budget every month. Some things will stay the same but you still need to put in that effort each month. Once you get the hang of it, after those three or four months are gone through, it will become much easier. And it, what used to take you 30 minutes will now take you five minutes, especially we have some of those things on auto pay, right? So we're gonna utilize the miscellaneous funds when needed. At the, end of the di- at the end of the day, every month, you will plan for that miscellaneous category that you can pull from, right? All right, so... But if you want to make, okay, so mini budget meeting if married. So 
what this is, is if you're married, you need to do it with your spouse. Um, if you're single, you can do it with an accountability partner or a content budget coach. Um, but what this is, is if you need to make some real adjustments um, in your budget throughout the month and you're not sure what to do, say you need to take $50 from somewhere to cover unexpected increases in gasoline because we've never experienced those, right? Not recently. <laughs> well, that's when you can look somewhere and maybe you haven't spent for the month and kind of like borrow from savings category or maybe use, um, you know, that money that's sitting that you've overflowed from your graduate grocery budget because now that we're on a budget, we don't spend all of it. Um, but you need to communicate about this because I know I wouldn't be happy if I went to go shopping on the 12th of the month only to find out that I only have $100 left because my husband borrowed from the food budget for home repairs. So you want to communicate any major budget changes, upgrades, or additions um, throughout the month. And that's how you're going to adjust that together as a team. Um, and if you don't have a spouse, like I said, um, reach out to an accountability partner that has your best interest in mind or a financial coach that can walk you through the process. So when you realize the purpose of budgeting isn't to limit your freedom, but to give you freedom, you'll be on the road to loving your life and your bank accounts. All right. So if you need more help, want to connect, you can find me um, at lindamaymyers.com. Um, you can reach me on email at lynda at lindamaymyers.com. You can find me on Facebook at Faithfully and Financially Free. I'm on Instagram and YouTube also as Linda May Myers. I offer free consultations to discuss your situation and what we can accomplish by working together. Thank you. And I hope this um, presentation has been a blessing to you.